men have difficulty with women who are completely out of control. But who women should, have difficulty. Who should control women? Well, other women themselves, men, society, just like everyone is controlled. I mean, you're controlled by society. I'm controlled by society. And thank God for that. I mean, it's part of... It's funny. I mean, you, you described yourself as a liberal earlier. And I think a liberal doesn't think that a society controls women or men. Well, let's say regulates. I'm a psychologist as well. But I mean, what is an out-of-control a... woman? What is this creature? How do we know when we met one? Well, I'm sure that you've met women in your life that, that, that acted towards you in a bullying and detestable manner. It's very difficult for women to cope with that because they don't have any real recourse. And female bullying can be unbelievably vicious. And usually that takes the place of, takes the shape of reputation destruction, innuendo and gossip. It's well documented. It's o very difficult women, to defend. But only no, men do it too, but men, no. Oh, but sorry, patterns, disproportionately women, in any of you or not. Sorry. Yes, when yes, disproportionately women. That's what the data indicate. I mean, if but men where are... Where is the if, data on innuendo and if, gossip? Well, it's among antisocial behavior among adolescents. It's a well-documented field. So, because people look at aggressive and antisocial behavior in women and in men. And in women, it tends to take the expression of innuendo, gossip, and reputation destruction. And in men, it take, tends to take the form of outright physical aggression. There's a whole literature on that. It's, it's not a surprise to anyone. This has been known for, for, for 30 years. I mean, the rates of antisocial... I think the idea of the female gossip probably predates 30 years. Well, it does, but, it does. By a long does. time, but that doesn't... It is, no, but, doesn't make it gospel, but really, people does have it? No, it doesn't, but people have looked at how women express... Look, women have to express aggression somehow unless you're willing to say that they're not aggressive. They tend not to do it physically, not to the degree men do, so they use other channels. And what other channels are there other than physical aggression if you're going to be aggressive? Well, you go after people verbally. You go after them with innuendo and gossip and reputation destruction. And that's how it, that's how it works. And just to be clear, that you think that's predominantly a female modus operandi? It isn't that I think that. Well, I'm it's that the you. clinical literature indicates that. It isn't that I think it. Well, I'm not interviewing the clinical literature. I'm interviewing you. What do you well, think? Well, I'm a psychologist and a scientist. And I, tend to, and I tend to base my opinions on what I've read in the broad, relevant clinical literature. I'm not making this stuff up. I studied antisocial behavior for like 15 years. I'm actually quite an expert on it. Women manifest aggression towards themselves and to others, but they don't use lethal force. They don't use physical force the same way men do. So they have to do it some other way. Why do well, they have the other to ways? do something some other way? That, you know, because you people are Hobbesian aggressive. You can take your war against... You know, so you're basically a Hobbesian. Life is no, war I'm half and against half. War. Half and half. Half Hobbes, half Rousseau. That's why I'm not an ideologue. Because I don't think that people are good or evil. I think they're both. I don't think that culture is security or tyranny. I think it's both. And I don't think that nature is benevolence or catastrophe. I think it's both. And that's why I'm not an ideologue. I, I need you to cite rule now because I've got 28 bits of paper here, but I'm just going to carry on in the meantime because we're near, getting towards the end and nicely warmed up. Uh, you rightly picked up on the disruptive effect of, of social media, but also the technological shifts in, in media and mass media uh, consumption. Uh, my argument was that this might be, you know, leading to a polarization that people like you who are immensely successful within this milieu, also driving your book sales, you know, you just, uh, just I think, just uh, as I'm talking to you, hit the, the top of the Amazon list here in the UK. Uh, but there is that, you know, that point that you become part of the problem that you've put your finger on yourself. You want people to get along together. You want men and women to sort of trade off. We don't agree entirely where these trade offs are, but, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're here and arguing about it. And yet at the same time, you succeed most when you say something very provocative that goes viral. You think you're sort of tra no, trapped I don't in think, a paradox. No, I don't think that's when I succeed most. So, for example, one of the, one of the uh, incidents that propelled me to 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 su success let's say in terms of, of public recognition in the UK was my interview with Kathy Newman and the reason that that propelled me to success wasn't because I said something provocative but because I refused under substantial duress to say anything provocative and so the part of the reason that I've become popular to the degree that I have been is that I'm actually very good at keeping my temper under situations that would mm. would would not under situations where there's substantial reason not to, let's say.